What's up, guys? Happy Wednesday. It's not Wednesday while we're recording, but it is Wednesday while you're watching. If you're watching when it uploaded. Never mind, it could be any day of the week if you're watching. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks guys for joining us again. Welcome to Ben and Tanae's channel. We're doing a sit down video, which we upload every Wednesday. Um, if you're not, if you don't know our schedule, we upload sit down videos every Wednesday. And on Sundays, we upload our regular vlogs. So, yeah, we've been struggling with the sit down video. <laughs> Yeah, it's very busy, you know. In the midst of a pandemic, we're still busy out here in the streets, you feel me? Yeah, so, you know, I'm still working and, and we do stuff on the weekends. We still try to kind of see our family that we, that we're very that we close can. to. You, you know, <laughs> not everybody, because, you know, you shouldn't be going around seeing everybody. But we still try to see people and get out and do stuff. Not like we used to, but, you know, we have to keep with the schedule. So today, um, I came across some of these uncomfortable questions you're supposed to ask or like you can ask your spouse or friend or person you're in a relationship with. Um, so I thought it would be fun for me and Ben to answer some of these uncomfortable questions. So, are you ready? He hasn't I'm all, seen- I'm always ready. So he I'm hasn't ready. seen any of them. So I don't even remember what they are. I screenshot these like a while ago. I'm so. an OG, so whatever. Anywho. All know. right. Question number one. Do you believe in true love? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's not really, I guess, you know, that's just to warm you up. It's like an icebreaker, you believe in truth. Right. But some people don't, so. You some know. people don't. There's some married people that don't. I I saw one couple talking about, well, they were saying soulmates. They don't really believe in soulmates. True love, yes. They yeah. believe in true love. Because true love can be, so they're seeing true love, true love as in spousal, like it girlfriend, and boyfriend. I don't know. You know, true love can be anything. You know, yeah. you have your first child, you know, you love your child more than anything. That's yeah. just true love, you know. Question number two, does your life have meaning? Yes. Yes. I think being uh, like just believers in Christ, I feel like, yes, my life has a meaning. Even if I don't fully know what the full meaning is, I know at least I'm here to spread the gospel. That's the, I know that's, that. That's, that's like the bare minimum. Right. That's, <laughs> I at least know that. What would you want your final words to be? So like the words you have right before you like pass or whatever. Uh, I don't know. I got a couple of things. I mean, this is off the top of the head. Um, I made it. Uh, you made it. Yeah. See you on the other side. Speaking and to me or just just. I mean, if, if it's my last words and you're still alive, hopefully you'll be there too. Hear, hear my last words <laughs> to know for sure that I did everything so I can get to heaven so I can meet Christ and see him face to face and things like that and that's the ultimate goal at the end of the day whether you're going to die or whether the coming of Christ comes you want to be in that number make it right I just want to make it um I feel like my last words would be I would hope my family was there, you know, if, if I'm going. Uh, of course, I love you. <laughs> right. I would want to say I love you to them. You know, even though they know that, I just, that would, I just, it would be great for those to be the last words they remember me saying right before I was gone. I'm going to be like Tony Baker. I ain't got no regrets. Nah. I ain't got no regrets. What impression do you think you give when you first meet someone? Um, chill and quiet. Probably. That's probably exactly what they think. They're probably, well, it depends. If you're in a talking mood, they probably like. But I mean, in the, in the most part, for the most part, when they first meet me, because yeah. I don't know you, so like, I'm not yeah. about to be chatting you up. I mean, during the midst of the day, if we still, if we've been in the same room for four hours or something crazy, then it, I open up a little bit. But like for the first, hour i'll probably just be i'm an observant type of person so i'm a i'm a react to how you're acting i'm not gonna if you're doing too much i'm gonna be chilling but if i can see okay this person's okay i'll probably you know talk a little bit i'm a talkative guy when you get to know me but first impressions if i don't know you i'm chilling yeah probably the same for me i don't say like i don't do i'm not good she with has people. faces she makes faces i do make faces so I'll probably, I don't know, <laughs> if I, <laughs> if, if, I don't know, if the person is irritating me, the first impression they probably will see from me is she's not a very nice person. 
<laughs> I used to get that a lot in high school, actually. And you don't have to irritate me. It, I think it's just the way my face looks when I'm not talking and when I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, kind of like that she'll, she'll know don't talk to that. me face. She don't know how to have that, so. Sometimes I'm not, I'm not even upset. It's just, that's how my face looks. Like, I'm just not. I'm just good. I'm good. I'm good. Like, I don't have to talk. Like, I, I'd rather just sit and listen. I might chuckle if something's funny, but I don't have to be in the conversation. If you had the chance to know when and how you died, would you take it? No. Me neither. Definitely not. I think we kind of talked about that in the, another video we made. You know what I'm saying? At the end I'm of the day, good. that's just a, a can of worms I don't want to open. Yeah. Because one, it's, at the end of the day, that's God's decision. Only he knows. And at the end of the day, if you did know how you were going to die, when you're going to die, you're going to try to stop it. Because that's just your natural instinct. So, I'm good. Do you believe in heaven and hell? Yes. yes. <laughs> Short answer. We do. You know what I'm saying? Period. Yes. Five things that irritate you about the opposite or... Same sex. I'll say opposite sex. Oh. Five things that irritate you about the opposite sex. Okay, that's put me on the spot. Five things. Uh, attitude. The way you think. Um. I feel personally attacked already. So. <laughs> I mean, that's just a, mo a higher percentage of females than yeah. most. Like the attitude. Like it's just always that whole thing. Like they say. You, uh, if you write a book about how to understand women, this is going to be like a quadrillion, bajillion pages. It's really not. Because, you know, we just don't know. We don't know how they think. And, like, they think we know how we think, but, like, it's irritating the way that they think. There's some things. Um, okay, attitude, the way you think. Um, never knowing what to eat. Uh, or never knowing what you want to eat. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? Um, <laughs> not getting what they want. How they, many is that? I feel like you named no, my ten. No, this is my fourth one. Not getting what you want, like you know, just being spoiled, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, that can go for both. Sexes. I feel like you're just talking about me. <laughs> well, you're the main woman in my life. So that's the only thing and, you have to go. And you act like. The other women that I know in your life, which is your mother and your grandma, not exactly like them, but just y'all yeah. have similar traits, so it's just like whatever. That's and then uh, the fifth one, I don't know, just for females in general, uh, being manipulative. Not her. Not anymore. me. But women not in general, me. yeah, like they, they can be. If, talking about men, like men, we're just idiots and they do stuff out in the open. Women, they real sneaky, manipulative, and all that stuff. I don't we like can it. be, yeah. Okay, so me, I feel like. Uh, they don't talk enough for me, like express themselves enough, which is annoying. Which you should say a higher percentage than most, because some men do at the end of the day. Not a lot of them. But they a higher percentage of men don't. Men. I think they hold them in because they don't want to look soft or something. You know what I mean? Let like it they, out, baby. You they hold me? them emotions in. Uh, I don't hold mine in. I didn't cry in front of my wife. You feel me? Um, they, they, not, they're not like thoughtful like romantic wise you know what i mean like not all of them but of course this is a general we can't speak for every single man. man you know what i mean but i feel like women are more thoughtful in that way um they don't know how to plan that can be irritating like just planning period like just plan stuff out like just, i don't like the last minute stuff he's not always last minute but i don't i, I don't like last minute <laughs> I think like, when it comes it to event, you, you, you mean events and dates and stuff like that. Yeah. Because I feel like men, uh, they're gonna plan stuff out that's gonna exactly benefit them. So they're like, all right, I need to get, I need a job. I want to make put on my resume, this, this, and this, because it's gonna benefit them in a good way. And that's saying planning a date's not gonna benefit them, but they're like, can't plan for other people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they can plan for themselves. Um, what's something else? I don't know. Hey, that's hard. Those are it hard. is hard. But like, um, you just lean on your personal experience. I'm just trying to think day. of things that irritate me. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. Messy. Like, just leave stuff around. That, not just you. It's like the men in my life. <laughs> like, just leave stuff. What? <laughs> just leave stuff. First of all, I'm the cleanest person that ever touched the face of this earth. I had to walk off for that one. Anywho, yes, uh, cleanliness. Y'all ever notice that men like will throw stuff 
Not in the hamper, but by the hamper. I was talking to my girlfriend about that. Other subject. Anywho. Uh, <laughs> There's a method to that madness. Whatever. I'm not going to explain it to I them. explained it to my friends. And tell me if I'm right. <laughs> tell me if I'm right. Y'all throw it on the floor. That means it's not dirty enough to go in the hamper, but it's not clean enough to be hung up. Uh, most of the stuff that I throw on the floor, it, you can use that logic, but it's just because I might just wear it again the next day. That's if it's like it chill clothes. But like, for the most part, I throw it in the hamper. Um, I have one more. I don't know. It's hard. They don't like the movies I like. No, that's you on the other. I like the movies that she like. She's just an unfair person. That's all. <laughs> Period. All right, let's get uncomfortable here. All right. Because these questions are not that uncomfortable. Story of your first kiss. No, my first kiss? <laughs> you feel me? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Sir. I was in preschool. And, uh, oh my God. Sunshine Daycare. It was a Caucasian girl. I don't even remember her name. It was a long time ago. I was like, I was a little kid. You started young. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And we just, I mean, we, we had a peck. That was it. You know, but that's my first kiss. And I guess my first real, like, kiss when you actually mean it. <laughs> um, I probably would, this was probably when I was probably like nine or something right around that age. Um, I was with my mother. Nine? Yeah, I was with my mother around her friend's neighborhood. And it was a girl who was just, you know, uh, like playing house or whatever. Like I feel like that happens a lot. And, but like she actually liked me. Like my brother had a birthday party over that person's neighborhood. So they came over, and so that's when I like took a liking to the girl, and she actually liked me. So we was playing house, and you know, I was a mother, she was a father, and like we kissed. And then the funny story was like, she went like missing for like two days, not missing, but like whatever. So I was like, I knew where she lived, so I was like, hey. I was like, is she your boyfriend? And her mother was like, in the window, was like, she too young to have a boyfriend? She is. <laughs> Nasty. But yeah, that was, I guess that was my first Dang, kiss. Dang, you got an old story. I don't even. The, my first meaningful kiss is my first kiss with my the love of my life. I badgered her and she gave me a kiss right before we left. It was dismissal. I badgered her, she gave me a quick kiss and that was it. It said the story of your first kiss. Those were the first kisses. Okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't know when my first kiss was. I couldn't even make up a, I couldn't even tell you a story because I have no idea when it was. What feature of mine do you find most attractive? Uh your lips, your thinking or thoughtfulness, and uh, your gams. Meaning like her thighs and legs. That girl got gams. Really? Yes. I never knew. That. I'm all. Like, I don't feel like I'm always know. grabbing. Like, come on, now, stop. Okay, I didn't know that was like. Okay, anywho, um, <laughs> his eyelashes. I knew that. I always. I just think that in his. Crazy. Anyway, actually, his eyes too. Like when the light hits his eyes, sometimes they look very. They look hazel almost. Sometimes, I I, I just think they're pretty when that happens. I need, um, to, I need to get a mirror and go outside and let the light hit it real quick. I, I don't know how that looks because I'm not They're just really bright. You can see the brown in your eyes. When my eyes are very, very dark, you can, I feel like you never see the brown in my eyes. You can see his brown, beautiful brown eyes in the light. Okay, so his eyes. That's that's my favorite feature about him, I, I feel like. His eyes are like... She likes my like beard him. now. I do love his beard. But that's that's new. Like, this. that's just been a couple of years. But And I'm tall. Yeah, your height. I forgot. Why are you doing it for me? I forgot. Yes, his height. Because you told me these things before. So I have. Yes. His height. I do love his height. Your greatest accomplishment? Um, being filled with the Holy Ghost on June 21st, 2013. Check out the song, you feel me? The link will be in the description. Um, that's my first. And then the second is making a decision to be baptized in Jesus' name. And the third one would be marrying the love of my life. Yes. I feel like, yes, all of those. I feel like those are given. I mean, not really. People, some, some people don't know what the Holy Ghost is. So That's true. You know. But, I mean, like, I don't know. Outside of those, because he already oh, named them. I'm so, about okay, we're going to do that. But those are just, like, period. Okay, like you said, if they're given by my house, that's a big accomplishment. Just personal, I had a personal yeah. goal. I, I wanted, to buy, I wanted to buy a house before I was 30. 
to Nate, I guess she didn't know that, but I was like, it was important. I was going to buy a house. We, I, I mean, granted, we bought when we were 29, but either way, well, we actually were 28. We were 28. So you we know turned what I'm 29, saying? we were already here. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. But yes, I think that's our biggest accomplishment. Even together, I feel like that's one of our biggest accomplishments is buying a house. So, yep. Your closest friend and why? Um, besides my spouse? Uh, I would say you. Oh, okay. Well, my wife, and it should be for obvious reasons. She's my best friend. She's my lover. She's my confidant. This is the person that I trust the most outside of God. But outside of my marriage is uh, my boy Phil. And why? I mean, just because, you know, we just cool, you know. We're, you know, I'm able to talk to him and, you know, I don't tell secrets, so that's not. But if I ever did tell him a secret, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna be telling everybody and right. stuff like that. But and then my boy Mike still to the, to this day, that's just how it always is. I haven't seen him or talked to him in a little minute, but he's still my boy. If we see each other, it's like we pick up where we left off, and that's my boy. You know what I'm saying? My brother for life, and then my actual brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, my closest friend is definitely Ben. Like, cause this said just closest friend. Period. It's been. I, I don't, I'm not gonna go down the list, but the reason why is because I literally can tell him anything. Like, there's no cut, there's no like cut off, like, I'll tell him anything, but you know what I mean? Like, that, I will tell him anything. Yes. And, you know, he knows <laughs> the most about me. You know what I mean? He just does. And I don't be wanting to know it. Not the stuff about her, but like, she'll be telling me stuff. Stuff that, you know, that. Not necessarily about me. Just stuff that people have said or feeling or whatever just yeah. everything just blab it all out i'm like the person that she's gonna throw it on because some stuff is just hard to keep yeah so I like can. i feel like you know he has to know like he's he is my other half i feel like i have to tell him stuff you know just everything i tell him everything so I, he is hands down is my closest friend i could go down the list and name other people that are close to me but if they ask like who is your closest friend it is ben most traumatizing experience of your life? Um, for me, is when uh, I think I feel like a lot of kids experienced it, maybe. But I was, uh, I don't know what age I was, but I couldn't swim. So, like, I was at a pool, and like, people, some people didn't know I couldn't swim. So, like, they do a basketball in the water or something. I'm like, why you do that? And then they told me to go, they pushed me into the pool. And eight feet. Was, oh my god! Yeah, and I was having a time. I mean, the the lifeguard came pretty quick, but you know, them little seconds be feeling like yeah. forever. Oh my god, that is traumatizing. Oh <laughs> so my after that, like, I never really liked deep water anyway. Like, I can swim, but like, I don't like deep water. So like, I like my feet touching the the ground. But you know, if I need to swim to save my life, I can I can swim. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but like. You know, I just like when I'm in the pool. I'm not going. I'm not diving. I'm not doing none of that. I'm, I'm chilling with my feet on the ground, five feet. You know, what I'm saying six feet, maybe because I'm six feet, but five feet. For me, most traumatizing experience is probably I don't know. Like I have so many traumatizing. Experiences. <laughs> Only because I'm dramatic. I think uh, when somebody in my family um, was like mean to me. And it like really, really hurt my feelings because I felt like they weren't mean to other people that were my age or that looked like me or whatever. I just felt like they were picking on me. And I felt like that was pretty traumatizing. You know, at that time when I wasn't with my family, like with my immediate family, it was traumatizing because I kind of felt alone. So that was definitely traumatizing. But, I mean, that, that, can, that can be held for a lot of years. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you kind just of the way you're going to act around that Person. Said person, yeah. you know, it can, you know, affect you it. want them to love you so much because that person, you know, it's an important person in your life, there's a family, so you know, but whatever. It, 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 it was traumatizing at, at one point. I mean, I had got over it, but you know, it was traumatizing because I was a kid, so yes. How do you think the human species will go extinct? Um, by their own doing, uh, humans just don't mind their business. And, you know, shout out to Tony Baker because he was talking about that a long time ago on this podcast. He was talking about the movie Kong 
and he was just like humans just be just be like, just not minding their own business. They didn't wait in there alone. like and then they get mad when they fight back or they just you know what I'm saying? Like but it will be about our own doing. Whatever it is gonna be. It's definitely I think we know <laughs> what it's gonna be. Of course. But, fire. It's yeah, gonna be by me, fire. But yeah. it's definitely gonna be I think it might be by our own doing. Like something that we're gonna do. It's already if we believe in the Bible, so we feel like it's already prophesied how it's gonna end. Uh, by fire. So Well let's just say in a world that it was no God or whatever. It'll definitely be by our own doing. I think as even humans, in the yeah. world, it's already like that. Yeah, it's we're like, we're ending everything now, like yeah, the ozone, like, just everything. Yeah, you know? so humans <laughs> destructive. Humans are trash, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you stay friends with your exes? Funny you should ask that, right? Because like literally, I'm best friends with my ex. Uh, look, don't get it twisted. One, I only have one real girlfriend in my life, and that was my wife. So, Me. she's the only ex-girlfriend I ever had. <laughs> so, yes. So, for me... This is definitely no, but yes for me. For me. Friends, no. I, I mean, I have some associates. Like, because only because there's some guys that I dated when I was young, when I was young and they're still, like, around because this is we were young. Stuff. Yeah, it was just kids, but they were my ex. Talk about being in so, like, real exes, no. I do not. I don't play those games. Like, no. <laughs> like, who has time? I, I don't time. play those games. We don't play. <laughs> Neither one of us play that. So, if I don't want him to play them games, I don't play them games. You know what I mean? Like, it's it a respect thing. I'm not about to be sitting up talking to my ex all night. Like, no. Would you ever take a cheater back? No. And the reason for that, and I've explained it to a couple of my friends and everything like that, I said, keep it simple. Because some people feel like you could. I was like, if you truly forgave them, don't keep bringing that up to that person because you made that decision to take them back. Me, on the other hand, I can't live with that. I can forgive them, but it will always be on my mind. So I wouldn't be able yeah. to, to go forward and put that in the past. It will always be on my mind, and I don't want to keep hurting myself but just by thinking about it. Or, and that's just me. You know, it's hard to move on. Yeah, so that's just me. So that, you know, on that note, <clears throat> I feel like that is a whole nother video. But um, my answer is no, but I can't, I can't say for certain what I would do. You know, if I was in a situation, I've never been in that situation, but my answer would be no, you know, just me talking now. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. Check out some of our older videos and just stay tuned for our next videos. Thanks, guys. Bye.